Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today, we're working on my 1984 Volkswagen Rabbit. In general right now, I have pieces and parts laying around to my van, which I'm in the process of doing partial four-wheel drive conversion on. So, you know, a four-wheel drive is consists of adding a transfer case and a front axle. I'm doing the transfer case portion right now, which also required a transmission rebuild. It's been a lot of work and it's still not done. I have to shorten my gas tank. I have to reroute my exhaust. I thought there was something else. There's a long list for that one. Point being, I've been working on my van and I was like, no big deal. I have two vehicles. This will be my Aaron's car. And wouldn't you know it, the other day I was on my way to pick up some transmission parts and literally within the span of like 15 miles of driving, like between my first errand and my second errand of that day, the wheel bearing on this went from totally fine to like dangerous to drive on. I have no idea why the two wheel bearings were done two years ago, so I can only assume shitty part quality, incorrect installation. Well, that's it. There's two things. Today, I'm gonna do the one wheel bearing that's bad so I can have my Aaron's car back. We are together gonna do a VW front wheel bearing on a Mark 1 Rabbit. Off we go. For starters, I just wanna show you what's wrong here. Uh, so it started as kind of a clunking-ish sound and then progressed to like kind of a heinous metal on metal whine howl thing. <sighs> And uh, I got out at the parts store. Mind you, I drove down the interstate like 20 minutes only to find that this is the condition of my wheel bearing. And then I limped the car back at 45 miles an hour on the highway with my parts straight to here uh, and you had to wait for these new bearings to come. Now I would recommend you do both sides at the same time generally for the sake of my insanity because I'm already mid project and this is just fixing the side project. I'm just gonna do this one side and I'm gonna plan to do the other side at a different time. But you can see this is the problem. This shouldn't move like this at all. And to be clear, this isn't the brake rotor. The brake rotor is pretty well stuck on to the hub at this moment. So we're gonna walk through how to get this off. For starters, you need to get your steering knuckle isolated, which means taking off your tie rod, taking off your strut, taking off your brake and undoing your axle nut. Uh, you wanna undo your axle nut first if you don't have an impact, I have an impact, so I'm just gonna take it off right here. And your brakes, you wanna pull off. It's a good idea to have some kind of brake hanger. I mean, this is a pretty strong spot. This is also a pretty strong spot because you don't just wanna hang it on its brake line. That's no good. So we're gonna go ahead and get this out of the way. And actually, I'm about to do the wrong bolts. You could take these two off, which would be like servicing your brake pads, but what's quicker and easier for the sake of what we're doing and what I already did incorrectly, or was about to do, is you don't need to take these two off, you wanna take the brake mount bolts off, which, let's see. I feel like everything on the Rabbit is a 17, a 19, or a 15, and a few other random things are weird sizes, so they're 15s. Uh, and we'll just get in here real quick. Needless to say, you want to put your car up on jacks, probably as high as you can. Uh, that was tightening. <laughs> In order to do this, just to make it easy on yourself. Mine's at kind of a nice kneeling height right now, which, you know, if you don't have a lift, that's pretty good. You might need more sauce. I wasn't asking, I was... There you go. And you know, breaker bar is, is fine for these. You'll have no problem with a breaker bar. Sometimes with impacts, if your socket isn't super tight on the bolt or super tight on the chuck, then you won't get as nice of a result. So yeah, see the whole thing comes off now instead of like just pulling the pads out and I talked about brake hangers. Okay. All right, we got that out of the way. To get this knuckle off, you need to do top connection, tie rod, and ball joint. I already took the nut off the tie rod end, and that's just a 19 millimeter, I believe. And the best way 
on any car, any car at all, to get this out besides a tie rod end separator is to, you kind of want to hit, oh, you can't even see it. Let me get the brake rotor out of the way. So take the screw off your brake rotor. I forgot because like, honestly, a lot of vehicles just don't have anything holding the brake rotors in. You want to take a big hammer, probably the biggest you got, and you're going to tap it right on this ball. Now, if you hit here, you're going to damage the threads. And this socket is like two different size cones that press into each other. So hitting it this way isn't very effective at breaking that seal. But if you hit it this way, you're actually deforming the outer cone slightly. Uh, and you can put two fingers under it if you want. Uh, well, we already lost the brake. That wasn't very helpful. Not to mention, I'm still kind of hanging it on the brake. Wow, this is actually not working very well at all. That's rare. There it is. Okay, so, you know, sometimes it takes more hits than other times. Sorry for just clobbering that on camera. I mean, that was a realistic, realistic representation of the potential level of effort. Now the axle socket you might not have. It's a 30 millimeter. I think a long time ago I got this set just for this purpose just to have a 30 millimeter socket for the Mark I axle. Okay, well, we figured out why the bearing failed or not backed off. That sucks. So the way these bearings work is that it needs the tension of the axle nut on the end in order to support the bearing properly. And so our axle nut was pretty much finger fucking tight because it came right off. There's the washer. And you know, if it's finger tight, you're screwed because I think the actual torque spec is like 200 foot pounds or something. So that's, that's why it failed. We figured that one out. Installation error or just like working loose over time. So when I put this back on, I'm gonna use some Loctite. I'm gonna take that pinch bolt out of the ball joint, set that aside, and now we should be able to, yeah, just pull it out. Honestly, VWs are maybe one of the only cars where the ball joint just nicely pulls out of the bottom. And there you go, so we got it off. Your wheel bearing is in here. And what sucks is it presses on to literally everything. So <laughs> I do have a press and we're probably gonna figure out pretty soon here if uh, the press has enough capacity to actually do this. All root, all root. So this is what it looks like under better lighting. There's a snap ring that you gotta get to get this thing to come out. And what else? Bearings are kind of a pain. So this is what the new one looks like. So you get the idea. This whole thing is inside there. Uh, and it's pressed on. It's pressed on both to the center shaft of the hub. It's pressed in there and then it's pressed into the knuckle itself as well. So to get it out, you kind of want to start by, you got to press this, the hub out of the center. And the thing about bearings, especially when you're putting in new ones is you always want to press on the race. So you need to be putting pressure on the outside if you're trying to push the whole thing and you'd be putting pressure on the inside if you're putting it on something. And what kind of sucks is when we press this out, this inner race is gonna go with it and then we have to cut the race off of the spindle. Trashed. Anyways, just gotta figure out how the hell to get this in such a way that we're actually pressing the right object. Because if you do it like this, you're just putting the load uh, right back into the assembly. So that's kind of the tricky part about pressing things. Let's see, I think I need these ones. Take the snap ring out. That's always a good first step. Oh, geez. I'm about done with snap rings after doing my transmission. Shit's a pain. Sometimes using a pick as you're fucking with a snap ring is really the best combination because what you need to do is get it above above where it sits but yeah like that and now that we got that out you can just run this land here 
and there we go. Whereas if you just sat there and fought it with the snap ring pliers, you might be there for a while. Okay, so we got that out. The bearing itself, because the snap ring's on this side, the bearing has to come in and out by here because that's where the snap ring is. It, you can't push it out the front. So, yeah, we gotta press the spindle out first somehow, which pretty much means we gotta set up this somehow to catch right here, which I will admit is, is a little bit tricky because that's right there is like as wide as it goes. <laughs> so a brief also just kind of aside is that it's perfectly valid, and this is what I did last time, to take your knuckle off yourself if you're trying to save a buck, and then just give this beautiful problem to a machine shop to take care of. So most machine shops will have a press, plenty of you know, local mechanics will have a press, and you can just avoid having to do this part by making someone else do it. And usually it costs like $50 a side or something, you know, so take that into account. But often, often worth it, depending on how much BS you're trying to do. And, oh, oh, we're like all the way down. Oh, Lord. Didn't really set the deck height good on this one. And then pressing is like, I mean, it's never like that sketchy, but you are playing with like, this is a six ton press, which is honestly peanuts. It's not, not terribly potent machine, but you know, you're playing with a lot of force. So sometimes it's honestly best just left to someone who does this day in and day out. So you don't have to screw around with it as much. Though I successfully did a set of Lexus wheel bearings you know, somewhat recently, so I'm feeling, I'm feeling at least slightly confident. And now I'm just taking up height to make this easier. These are awesome if you decide at some point in your life to go down the route of having hydraulic press or any press, or even if you don't have a hydraulic press. Now, right here, I'm keeping this up so we're pushing the hub out and I'm really not too sure how well it's gonna fare with this amount of contact patch on the wood, but we're just gonna send it. We're about to find out. So we're putting quite a bit of pressure on and I wouldn't be surprised if this wood just breaks off. Yeah, it's not looking good. God damn it. All right, I'm feeling better about this setup. I got big pieces of metal, little pieces of metal. It's clamped together so it won't slide off this lip I'm trying to press on. And my guess is we're gonna bend the tube steel. Oh! So I think that, like I bought this six ton press cause I, it was enough for my needs at the time. But I think what you really need, uh, if you're serious about pressing things, is like a 10 or 12 ton press. Like a six ton is just enough to almost do some things. Cool, so we're here. I think the problem is now is that I'm pushing this through when I don't wanna be. Oh well, that might have to go all the way through now. Too late. So what happened there was I was pressing and it was working and then we actually bottomed it out on the bearing inside. Or it wasn't working and I'm just making shit up. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, and it's like, it's like kind of violent. So you can see actually, ow, I just punched myself in the face and that came apart. So you can see we actually just push the spindle off the bottom race of this bearing and it's all still here. It's still on the spindle. So we're gonna have to cut that off. And now, there we go. Now we're actually fully out. So that was a pretty good setup, all things considered. So now we have our spindle, which looks like this. Uh, you can see the race is still stuck on it. So we have to 
cut this race off the spindle, which at this point too, go ahead and throw away all those inner junk that goes inside there. They're toast to begin with. And you know, you can wipe it out if you're kind of OCD like I am. And now what we want to do is we want to press kind of on this inner cup. You can press out here if you can get to it. And actually it looks like there's a front snap ring too. That's interesting. So the size I'm going with, I want it to sit down in there nicely, but it can still come out. And this one's a 57 millimeter. And it takes a little bit of jiggling to get it down in here nicely, but that's what you want. So it's sitting on the bottom. I hope you're supposed to take it out this way. It looks like you could actually take it out the other way too, which is interesting. And what's key here is you're not trying to break your part again, and you need to leave room for it to come out, which is kind of the crux of pressing stuff is this delicate balance between not destroying your part and getting a good hold on it. It's interesting that VW uses two snap rings. Okay, and that's coming out pretty nice, all things considered. I would say it's meant to leave that way. And we just hit what we're jacking on. So I gotta readjust. Uh, it's at a pretty wonky angle and I'm like using my brake mount as the stand But the only reason I feel okay doing that is because it's not Really we're not pressing that hard to get this out at this point Oh, we are so close but so far That's where we're at or I should have just pressed it out the front. That seems very choice Might still have to honestly we'll find out if I can't, if I can't figure out a good way to hold it, then you're kind of up a creek when it comes to pressing it. Okay. Our bearing out of the knuckle. That's what your knuckle looks like. There are two snap rings for the record. I didn't realize that. So you could press that out. And if you did it tastefully, then you could remove the snap ring and press the other thing out the front which seems easier to fixture. There's this nice face going on instead of this stupid stuff. But I don't think I did any damage the way I did that, so that's good. And you just kind of need a bunch of hunks of metal. That's pretty much all there is to it. Okay, so I have this bearing separator set up to maybe pull this race off. I just don't think it's gonna work, but here we go. We're gonna try it out because I have it. Yeah, that like didn't even remotely do anything. All right, well, that was a waste of time. So on to plan B, which always works. But... So usually I think people use like a Dremel and a teeny cutting disc and cut it straight this way. I don't have a teeny cutting disc. I just have a regular cutting disc that's super worn out. And I'm gonna cut, I think kind of like at an angle so I don't totally nick this. And as long as you don't brutally ruin this part, you should be able to press a new bearing on there. Or if you're worried about it, you could just skip the step and buy a new front spindle. This is a great time to use an air hammer if you have one. If not, uh, you're gonna do what I'm doing. Ah, okay, it's free. Just kidding. Uh, well, we still have to get it off. I think it's free. Yeah. All right, we got our inner race off. We kind of fucked this surface up a bit and we nicked the back of that. Nothing that's gonna cause the car to explode, but certainly slightly less than ideal. It might be worth just touching that up very, very briefly with uh, just some sandpaper. 
So now that we have everything fully apart, the good news is to put it back together is just the reverse. We're gonna press this bearing into here first, which is now a nice straightforward pressing job. You just blast it in there. You can save your old bearing and actually use that as what you're pressing with, which is what I would recommend. Put your little adapter in here, nice and flat-ish. Put that on there. And I wouldn't, you don't wanna like dress the inside of this bearing where it sits in the hub really at all because you don't want the bearing to come out. That's not the point. Uh, and so you can just leave it all dirty nasty in there. The takeaway kind of from this, this video is that pressing things is a pain in the butt and you should just take it to your local machine shop and give them some business. <laughs> Cause otherwise you'll end up like me. Okay. Uh, something's a little fucky. What's happening? We're not going in straight. So if you don't go in straight, it's gonna feel like it's binding. Uh, that's because it is. And you can even it out by changing where you're putting pressure. Okay, we got that straightened out. I pretty much just changed where I put the pressure in order to make it go in squarely. <sighs> well, this was supposed to be the easy part. Ah, uh, that's why it's still going in crooked. So you can kind of do this. Ideally, it would just go in straight and you wouldn't have to do this because it's probably not very good for the bearing. But what's important is that you catch that it's happening and then you won't damage things. So if it feels like it's, yeah, that's what it's supposed to do is just go in the freaking hole. So that isn't all the way in yet. Now, now is the time well, to make sure you didn't break it on the way in. Okay, we're good. Now is where you get your old bearing. I shouldn't have started with this one because it kind of... It kind of sucks. Or you should do this instead, honestly. That's much more better. Okay. And you don't want to go, you know, I'm going to stop there and check because remember, unlike some newer hub designs where you have this massive meaty thing holding you in, this is just a snap ring. And the way to tell if you're all the way down is to check if you can put your snap ring in. If you can put your snap ring in, then you're good to go. Ready to slay. This is where I'm at now, snap ring is in. That's important because we're about to press the spindle back into the center. Now when we're doing this, we're actually loading the center races and if you hold it by the outside, you will destroy the bearings immediately. So you gotta hold it by the inner race, which means I'm gonna find a good size socket. And what's good to know is that the bearing is actually deeper a little bit deeper than this. So when we support the backside of this with my big ass one and one fourth socket, we don't need a gap there. You could even do it this way because that thing, that thing, <laughs> that spindle isn't gonna press all the way through. So it's not gonna become an interference problem. So now again, we're ready to press. We're probably gonna get totally bent again. I didn't realize how far down we are, but you know, we're just gonna go for it. And beautiful. So I'm supporting the inner race as we press this on. I might run out of throw. Nah, and then once I'm all the way down, I like to give it a little half extra pump just to make sure. And then we can take this off, take that out. And we have a new 
nice and tight wheel bearing installed. So if this got bad enough, the race is separated while you were driving, it would, let me think about that. The only thing holding it on would be your stub axle, which is bolted from here to there. So it would take a lot for your wheel to fall off, but it could happen. Uh, safety glasses are a good idea. <laughs> so I guess kind of to highlight pressing stuff, just because you have a press and you have things to press with, like you can be really well set up in terms of your equipment, but unless you take your time and kind of think about, okay, I'm grabbing here, I'm holding this, I'm pushing there. Like you need to be very careful and on it with like which things you're doing. So just having the tools, unfortunately, when it comes to pressing things, doesn't actually guarantee you literally any success, which sucks balls. So if you feel like you want this and you wanna be able to press other things like bushings, bearings, there's lots of things that press is useful for and I like having one, but it doesn't mean it's some crazy golden ticket, silver stairwell, you know, answer to all your problems because the reality is you can still screw a lot of things up with it or get halfway and not be able to finish, etc. So just, you know, bear in mind that. So if you feel like that's not a trip you wanna take, just send it somewhere else to have them do it. And then you'll get this back with a tight bearing in it and you'll be able to put it back in your car. Here we go. Installation is just the reverse of what you did to take it out, plus some cussing and such. All right, that went in pretty easy, no cussing so far. Oh, also, the first thing you wanna do is put it through your drive shaft. And if your drive shaft doesn't have grease on its spines, you wanna grease them so they don't suck. This is the easiest bottom ball joint in the world, I think. One of the things I love about this car in general is that it's very, very, very just mechanic friendly. Like, I don't know if I've worked on an easier car than this one. I don't think I've encountered a single part of it where I'm like, oh, wow, this is impossible. You know, maybe pressing the front wheel bearings could be like, could be like one of the hardest things. There's a torque spec for that, but you know, tight works too. And I like to just get these things in here for starters. Kind of just trying to get your shit set up. I have replaced my stock bolts as of a long time ago with some stainless steel ones. A uh, good upgrade if your bolts are ridiculously rusty and terrible to work with on your strut connection. And then I didn't really mark this very well when I took it apart, but I know for a fact that I like to get it kind of close. And then I know for a fact it's like, oh, I did trace it. I traced it last time I took it apart. So I know it's like right there. Also there's, you can see the rust line. So I know if it's right there, then we're good. Tighten the crap out of those. Don't want that to come off. And this impact gun doesn't really go that high anyways. It maybe puts out like, I don't know, like a hundred foot pounds or so, maybe 120 on a good day plus whatever losses you account for. So it's not the end of the world. Like these, these are tight enough is my point. Oh, before I do this. So our whole problem started because this came loose. So this time when I put it on, I'm going to use a generous amount of blue Loctite in there. So it does not come loose. And then I'm also gonna actually use a torque wrench on this once I put it back down on the ground. For now, I'm on my first setting on my big gun, which means it's like 100 to 150 foot pounds, which is fine if I go all the way. And then we could probably go up to setting two and give it just a couple kind of things. That's what you want. Brake rotor. I 
honestly, it's a good idea to put this screw on, like not ridiculously tight. Your lug nuts hold this on anyways, and it can actually be pretty tough to get that screw back out. So it wouldn't kill me to put it on a little softer. If you wanna check now if you got your brake rotor greasy in any way, cause it sucks to have greasy brakes. And we'll see if we can put this junk back on. What's wild is like certain parts of this car I haven't touched in so long. Like I think I redid the front brakes. Like multiple, like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 years ago. No, nah, I mean, probably only like four years ago, but brake rotors back on and tight, putting my tie rod end back in. The funny thing is, is if you don't do the pressing work on this one, then it's only like a 20 minute job max to take your steering knuckle off. To take your steering knuckle off the whole bit. Uh, and of course, once you take on the responsibility of pressing it yourself, it rapidly becomes more than that because it just takes a while to set up each press movement that you're doing. I'm gonna go Loctite the other side now, put it back on somewhat tight, same way, put the wheels on, drop the car, and we'll final torque it with a torque wrench. And it's totally worth saying it again, these bearings need the tension of the nut not to fail. So this is the third bearing I've killed then because there's not enough tension on it. I took the axles out when I had the engine out a few years ago and rolled it around the yard. Literally didn't even drive it. This is an empty engineless chassis on wheels and it still ruined the bearings. So if you're gonna roll your project around, you take an old pair of axles and cut them off and still put them in and tighten them or do something, but you should check your axle nuts and make sure they're tight and to spec because I've actually never failed a wheel bearing from old age. I replaced them at some point, I think, just out of like general due diligence because it was an old car, which is kind of silly. You don't really need to do old car due diligence on things that aren't broken. And then, like I said, I've replaced them literally twice since then because of user error, because I didn't realize that the axle nut needs to be tight. So, because it was just this one side that was loose, I just retightened the other side with some Loctite, but it was still tight. Uh, there's no way in hell I'm pressing the other side for no reason, so I'm just gonna hang on to that extra wheel bearing. And again, it's important to say that at least these bearings right now with the car's weight about to be on them are already somewhat tight. You know, they're not final torque spec because I haven't done that yet, but they're at least somewhat tight. I think if you even just set your car down like I just did on bearings that had no stub shaft bolted to them, no axle nut on them, it would ruin them immediately. Torque on this comes out to 230 Newton meters is what manual mate calls for. That comes out to be about 170 foot pounds. So you'll need a proper torque wrench for this one, I'm afraid. And I'm pushing it through the e-brake. Put it in gear. Let's see if we can get it now. So it's like, it's not that bad. I feel like some VW guys like really hype this one up as like this crazy high torque fastener, but like, have you ever worked on construction equipment? 180 foot pounds ain't nothing. Yeah, so they're already plenty tight just from my big half inch impact. And there we go, now we're fully installed. Okay, so there you have it. That is how you change a wheel bearing, a front wheel bearing in the Mark One VW chassis. And also kind of a note, if you don't have a big impact for this job, it's gonna suck more. It's not the end of the world because big impacts are expensive, but I would, I guess, recommend you get at least a breaker bar, you know. This long would be good, this long would be better, and which are cheaper, much cheaper than an impact. And so when you're going to tighten your axle nut, tighten it as much as you can with the wheel in the air, maybe just set it down so there's not a ton of weight on it yet and tighten it as much as you can until you get tire slip and then set it all the way down and tighten it as much as you can. And if you don't have a big torque wrench, like I would, recommend you just get a big torque wrench. It's a good tool to have.
But if you don't have one and don't want to get one, you could just get a breaker bar and a piece of pipe and go ham. I don't think you can over torque these really. I mean, I'm sure you can, but it'd be tough. So now that we're in and fully good, I can go back to driving this as my Aaron's car. Thank goodness. I hope you found this informative. Thank you so much for watching. I'll have more interesting videos than wheel bearing replacements coming soon. Till then, appreciate you.